it is like doom and gloom city outside and this weather is making me just want to sit and read a book. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do after I'm done in here, done in here, done with this video. But we got to wrap up to get through today. So March, I had a slower reading month and I actually didn't even have that good of a reading month. I only had one full five-star read this entire month. And how many did I have? 14, I only read 14 books this month. Uh, normally for me, that's not what I normally average and especially only having one full five-star book bummer so dorian no oh my god he has my one chapstick i don't know where he found <laughs> how did you get this down but he was about to push it under my bed sir don't lose my singular chapstick that i have here so let's just go ahead i'm just gonna go in order of what i read from start to finish so let's go ahead and jump in just apologizing here. You're gonna hear some background noise from Dorian scratching my bed. For the next clip, it'll go away soon. So first up, I have Power by Cassandra Robbins. This one is a part of the Blurred Line series that a bunch of authors got together. It's like standalones, but they just all got together and wrote like taboo stories or like blurred story, like blurred lines stories. So this one is a mom's fiance forced proximity age gap romance. So this one follows, uh, what is her name? Raven. Raven and Jet, aka Mr. Powers. So Raven moves into her mother's house for some reason. Is she going to school or something? I don't know. She moves into her mom's house and she starts. Dorian, stop scratching that. I just know you're going to be able to hear that. Stop. I had someone comment on a video of mine recently being like, what's all that noise in the background? Well, I have cats. <laughs> Just sometimes don't listen to me, I'm so sorry. And immediately when she shows up, she's already like infatuated with Mr. Powers and he's a rich billionaire and he's with her mom and they're like engaged, but they're kind of like, they have an agreement a bit. Like they have not like an open relationship, but they like hook up with people, like with each other, I guess. And whatever, it's just not like the best relationship. And honestly, I don't really even feel like explaining this book that much because I don't really care about it. It was fine. I gave it three and a half stars. I gave it three on Goodreads because it was like fun. It was very enjoyable. Just like suspend your disbelief. However, with it being so like forbidden with it being like the mom's fiance, I wanted them to fight a little bit more. I wanted there to be some more angst and there wasn't. This was kind of like the definition of like no thought, no plot, just hot, which is fine. But I mean, it's not going to be anything to like write home about. So I'm going to keep on moving on. Next up was my five star read of the month. And it was my favorite book I read this month. And it might make it on my top 10 of the year. And that is Even If It Hurts by Marnie Mann. I talked about this book recently in my like romance books that I've been loving recently. And I was just head over heels for this book. So this one follows Chloe. And when she is in college, she goes abroad. And I think for her senior year, and she's studying abroad in London, like in the UK. And while she's there, she ends up meeting Oliver. And they just have like this whirlwind kind of romance. She falls in love. She kind of like experiences all these firsts with him and then obviously her semester comes to an end and she's thinking about staying but then she gets a job offer back in the states so she ends up going home and when her and all of her part it's like such a sad goodbye and they're kind of like we don't want to stop talking but like also you know like what's our relationship gonna look like whatever and eventually when she moves back they just kind of lose touch and she ends up having to like unfollow him on everything so she's not really up to date with him and she kind of moves on and then she ends up meeting Lance and she falls in love again she ends up getting married like all the things they have like great friends group together they both have like great jobs great careers and she gets an opportunity to go to like start working on this new project and go to Amsterdam and start working over there on this project so she ends up going and when she shows up in Amsterdam guess who is also working at the same company now Oliver and she gets reconnected with him and it's a love triangle there's cheating in it so if you don't like cheating then this isn't gonna be for you this was just so it just touched a deep part within my soul. I really personally connected with part of this book and I think that's why the ending made it like even more devastating because I was like, if I can't get my happy ending, I want her to have her happy ending and I don't know. It just did something to me. This book like just really spoke to me. It's a love triangle where like genuinely both of the choices are great choices. Like Lance and Oliver, they're both really great guys. Like uh, one of the things I don't like in love triangles a lot of times you can tell which one the character wants to choose. And like that kind of doesn't make it fun. Where genuinely like in this case, both characters were great choices. Both options were great options and she genuinely loved and cared about both of them and just had different kinds of love. You know, it's her first love and then it's like her husband, her like adult love. It was just incredible. Five stars from me and I cannot wait I already pre-ordered this book for book bonanza from Marty Man I can't wait to get it signed and like have it in my hands because it's just like I'm telling y'all it fucked me up I just had to like sit on my couch after finishing reading it and cry for a while 
well. So, but I mean, that's what I want. That's what I want for my books. I want them to hit me like that. And this one did. So then next up, I read From the Embers by Ali Martinez. This one, um, I buddy read with one of my friends that we buddy read a book typically every month together. And we read From the Embers. And this one follows Brie and Eason. And so they are both married to different people. And like they're so like Bree's husband and Eason are best friends and then like Eason's wife and her and Bree are best friends and they don't really like each other they like tolerate each other for the sake of like the couple friend group and one night they're all together at a house and there is a fire and Eason thinks he's dragging his wife out of the fire and then when he gets out he realizes that he actually grabbed Bree and took her out of the fire and that both of their spouses were still inside and they both died so then it's now just Bree and Easton and their children now left to kind of like pick up the pieces and it's them kind of like growing together and like learning how to navigate the world with other spouses and as single parents and kind of like after losing everything i liked this i think i gave this one i think i rounded up to four stars i think this was another three and a half it was good my thing is there was a time jump pretty early on and i was kind of like whoa i feel like we kind of like didn't get to see some certain things of like healing or like maybe like more of that attraction growing i felt like it maybe like moved a little fast then because of that time jump but that was fine there were some twists and turns in here that i was not expecting so i guess like that was fun but overall i was just kind of like it's fine like this was fine it was like a solid book i would still recommend it it's just like me personally it's not one that like it's not like even it hurts where i'm like that one like i felt it in my soul this one was just like an enjoyable read but it's not one that I'd like probably ever reread. I don't know. It was good. It was fine. But yeah, just didn't go where I thought it was going to go, which was fun at certain times, but also a little like, wow, okay. Just a lot of stuff happens to these two. Okay, next up, I read Spare by Prince Harry. So I don't typically read a lot outside of romance or fantasy or even just like fiction in general. However, I do enjoy a good memoir or like biography or autobiography. And I typically read like a couple each year. And I was obviously very excited for Spare by Prince Harry. I'm not one of those people that's like super obsessed with the royal family. I do find them fascinating simply because like, why wouldn't they be fascinating? But I'm not like a huge like I don't know a lot about them like I don't watch the crown like I'm not like very well versed in their history however I do really like Harry and Meghan I liked Kate and Will too like whatever I liked watching their wedding when I was younger cute but I liked Harry and Meghan and I still do and I know that's like controversial I think I had someone literally DM me and they were like you're like a fan of Meghan and Harry and kind of being like <gasps> like how dare you I don't know I am and I was very curious to read this book now here's the thing with it I it's kind of split up into three parts and I read the first part and the third part and I skipped the whole middle of it but I'm still counting it as an entire read because this one the first part is kind of like his childhood talking about his mother losing his mother his experience like growing up in school all that stuff I thought found that interesting then the middle chunk is a bunch of his time in the military which is like I'm just not as interested in so I did skip that and also like my library hold was running out for it like I had the physical book to read for my library and they were not giving very long because obviously the waitlist is huge like my mom and I were waiting on the waitlist for so long and my mom read it too for, so I had even less time to read it and the part that I was most interested in was his childhood and then the stuff when Megan came into the picture so I really enjoyed the parts of this that I read though I think some of it was like oh my god but also like am I that surprised not really because like you see in real time how hateful people are so I'm kind of like I wasn't that surprised but it was just wild. I really liked getting like the insight into their relationship and just how it started and like just seeing that it really was like they just like truly love each other and I just thought that was cute. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Next up I read The Billionaire by Marnie Mann. So I listened to this one on audio. Um, My Hoopla has I think six Marnie Mann books. I've finished all of them except for The Intern. That's the last one I have but otherwise I've listened to all of her books that she has on there and I've just been on a Marnie Mann kick if you can't tell. So The Billionaire is the second book in the Dalton Brothers series and this one follows Joe and Jenner and obviously it's a billionaire romance. So Joe and Jenner. So Jenner's a high-powered lawyer and they meet out at a club or a bar one night. They have a great night they hook up you know whatever and they just have like a fun time that turns into like a couple more nights I think while she's on vacation maybe with some girlfriends or something and it just kind of turns into a couple of nights and then you know they end up kind of like being in a bit of a relationship like a bit of a long distance relationship you know Jenner's really trying to put in the work he really likes Joe and he's like sending her nice birthday gifts and they're like traveling together but then there's a little bit of a bombshell that turns out that she is his business partner's daughter 
and it's a no-no. So I really enjoyed this one. Again, this series is just really fun. Like I'm really liking the Dalton Brothers series. I still think the first one is probably my favorite, but I did still really like this one a lot. Another thing that I really liked about this one is that Joe, she, even though I guess, yeah, she like comes from money and everything she, because her dad is like a very well-off businessman. She is also very smart and she is working really hard to reach her goals and kind of like prove herself. And I just really enjoyed that aspect as well. And I thought that made their relationship feel a little more even than her just like being like a young girl like fresh out of college you know next up i read damaged like us by kristen beccarici this one is the spinoff series of the addicted slash college series this is their second generation so this first book follows moffy who is lily and lowe's oldest son and it's him and his romance with his bodyguard pharaoh so uh moffy has always had a bit of a crush on pharaoh and pharaoh used to be lily's bodyguard but then when they did some shuffling he ends up becoming moffy's latest protector and it ends up being their romance and moffy runs a lot of the um like what oh my god why like charitable foundations for the families and stuff and he's really involved in that really wants to like give back a lot and he's just very much the protector of his family like his siblings and even like his parents like he's very protective over his father because obviously there were a lot of rumors about like who maybe his true dad was and he is very much protective over Lo as well. And you just really see how much he loves and cares about his family. And then how like Pharaoh needs to kind of step in and be that layer of protection for him. That it's like Moffy can't also protect himself and he's worrying about protecting his whole family. And it's their romance. Obviously it's forbidden because bodyguards should not be dating their clients or, you know, like messing around with their clients. And they don't want their families to find out because they think that then obviously... They would probably put Pharaoh on someone else's detail. And also they don't want the media finding out because then Pharaoh wouldn't even be able to like bodyguard low if ever if like he becomes a celebrity in and of himself so anyways it's their romance I loved it there was a little thing at the end that I was like oh my god what is this <laughs> but I really liked it and I'm really liking getting some of the side characters like Jane uh Connor and Rose's daughter obviously I knew she was probably gonna be my favorite but she's like a cat lady too and I'm like oh my god I can't wait for Jane and Thatcher's book and I've already started the second one and I'm very much enjoying this series and I give this one four and a half stars next up I read Untouchable finally <laughs> by Sam Mariano so obviously this book has been on my TV for a long long time and I finally gave it a go and I ended up giving it four stars so this one is a bully romance very heavy on like enemies to lovers so it starts out and it's it's people say it's dark I guess like the beginning of it is dark but I wouldn't say it's like a dark romance altogether Zoe is a high school student and Carter is the star football player in their town and they live in Texas so it's like football is like a really big deal there especially high school football and these players just kind of get away with anything that they want and one of the players uh harasses Zoe and she ends up reporting it getting him in trouble and getting him suspended from the team so he wants his revenge and he gets two of his friends and corners her in a classroom and things just kind of really escalate in that situation and Carter ends up being the one who does a lot of the escalating it ends up being their romance after that Carter is like a dog with a bone and he is not going to let Zoe out of his sights even though she wants nothing to do with him he's very persistent uh he's very in your face with her and he just eventually breaks her down until she ends up liking him and they start dating so it's it's messed up I mean it's messed up but I don't care I like that this one for me I think my biggest thing of why it wasn't five stars first of all it's so long it's like a thick book it's not so long it's like 480 pages. I mean it's long but it's not like excessively long as long as some of these other books tend to be but I just think I've kind of gotten past the high school aspect of books. There are very few authors anymore that I would even like read a high school book from anymore just because I find a lot of it like kind of unbelievable at this point. And I know that it's like suspend your disbelief. And that's what I love about like forbidden and taboo romance is that it's so far from reality. But there's something about like reading in high school that I'm just kind of like, mm, I'm just kind of over. So unless it's series that I've already started and that I want to keep finishing, or if it's like Penelope Douglas, QB Tyler, <laughs> like Anna Huang, unless if they're going to write a high school romance, then like I'll read it. But otherwise I think I'm just kind of like over that. So I did enjoy this. I was just kind of like, I was just wishing that they were in college and I get why they couldn't like why they couldn't be because I guess it was like star football player of like the high school I don't know but it was fine I liked it but I'm not like obsessed with it I'm so sorry Nikki if you're watching this I'm so sorry I know it's your favorite and I still liked it it's just not like a new favorite of mine but I still want to read more from Sam Mariano because I did really like the writing and the psychological aspect of Carter 
is really interesting. Next up, I read The Prince's Bride by J.J. McAvoy. So this one follows Odette and Gail. And Odette is a daughter. <laughs> that sounded so dumb. Is a daughter. She's a daughter. I mean, isn't everyone like a child of someone? Odette's father basically made like the Google equivalent, you know? So he's like super wealthy, has all this money, but he ends up passing away. And it is Odette and her mother, and then her half sister, and then her half sister's mother, so like the other wife. And it's like the two ladies on either side of the family, and the two moms hate each other, but the two daughters, like they get along, they wanna like, coexist and like you know have that kind of like sisterly relationship and when her father's it's time for like her father's will to be read and everything she finds out that in order to get her inheritance both of the sisters I mean individually to get their own money but they I they both have to get married to like continue on his line I guess which I'm like how like medieval of you to be like for my succession they both have to get married Odette is kind of like mm, who am I supposed to marry right now in order to get my inheritance and her mom is like dingling I found you a prince <laughs> and that's where Gail comes into the picture so Gail is the second son of so he's like second in line to the throne behind his older brother of this one country I'm forgetting what it's is it like Ursovia or something his father the king has really gotten their country into some financial trouble and they don't want to let anyone know that because obviously that would be a seen as a sign of weakness and they're really worried about like their royal family ever potentially having to like not exist anymore so Gail is looking for a wife to kind of like help pad their checkbooks a little bit because obviously the oldest brother he already has a wife he's our, like that's already settled so it's kind of up to Gail to get some money flown in this family so then they're like well why don't you marry Odette because then you can get Odette's money and then Odette can marry you so then that way she can have access to her money so it kind of ends up being a little bit of an arranged marriage however Odette is not very down for this when he shows up she's like excuse me what is this prince doing here like I'm not signing up for this she's a singer songwriter she just wants to like do her thing she does realize that her mother and her are in need of some of that money and yeah so it ends up being their arranged marriage this is very 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 slow burn it's the first in a series like I know they kiss but like I don't think anything like really happens and then there's a bit of like a <gasps> at the end like a bit of a cliffhanger and here's the thing with this one that I ended up giving it four stars I did really like it a lot and I really want to keep going with the series however I wanted them to be in Ursovia I wanted them to go to his country and instead they just like stayed in the U.S. the whole time and I was kind of like Mm, I already live here. I don't want to like be here anymore when I like have a prince from another country. I'm like, take me to your country, please. I really like this. I liked both of them individu individually and I liked them together. I liked how their friendship formed. I liked their slow burn relationship. And yeah, I did enjoy this a lot. Next up, I read The Single Dad by Marty Man. This is the third book in the Dalton Brothers series. And again, I listened to this one on audio. So this one falls forward in Sydney. So they end up meeting again. I feel like all of these they meet and they have like a one night stand. And then it's like what happens after that because I think both of the other two have also started that way so Ford is a single father this like one woman that he randomly hooked up with like three days after his daughter was born shows up at his office and is like I don't want this baby I'm signing over like all rights to you like you just take her and raise her and he has been a single father ever since then and he's been really like tentative about ever involving a woman in her life I think her name was Everly he's at the point where he really needs a nanny he's been relying on family members to help out but they're like you know you really need to hire like someone specifically to help you out with Everly so he goes on a search for a nanny and then uh Sydney ends up applying to be his nanny and she ends up getting hired and becomes his nanny and it's their romance uh once again a lot of fun definitely my least favorite so far that I've read in the series I think I gave it four stars but it was like three and a half rounded up to four single parent books are just never going to be I just don't like kids and like a lot of this obviously was centered around kids and like with Everly which is like fine it's just not like my personal thing in books but I did enjoy their relationship and I, I just like Marnie Mann's writing it's like easy to read it's like quickly paced it's hot it's enjoyable it's entertaining that's kind of this book Okay, next up that I listened to Before You by Marnie Mann. So I think, is this one a standalone? So Billy is a food blogger and she is on a plane to go and review this one restaurant out somewhere, like in New York maybe. 
And while she's on this plane, she sits down, she sits next to this one man in the emergency row and they kind of like hit it off. And that happens to be, uh, not Ford, uh, Jared. And they kind of like hit it off a little bit. They're having fun. They're chatting on their flight. And then all of a sudden there start to be some flight issues and the plane ends up going down and it's them recovering afterwards. And at the same time that you're in this present POV, you're also getting a past POV of honey in like the 1980s. And it's about this woman who is falling in love with this one doctor that she ends up meeting and like her life and their struggle to get pregnant and all this stuff. And you don't really know how these two storylines connect until kind of towards the end of the book, which I'm not going to spoil. I do think that you have to go into this one blind. I'm going to kind of leave it there, honestly, for the explanation of this, because I didn't know where it was going. And I liked that. I think it's best that way. I think if you knew the twist, it wouldn't make it as enjoyable of a read. It definitely kept me like wanting to listen. Like I was listening to it when I was taking my parents dog on walks when I was dog sitting. And I like wanted to be like, do you want to go for another walk? Because I just wanted to like keep listening to this. This one I ended up giving three and a half round up to four stars. I liked it a lot. I don't know. I think the ending might've been a little too rushed for my taste, but I can't really even get into what that is because I don't want to spoil anything for this book but I just think I need a little bit more time after the certain like twists and turns that this book took to like m digest it and then also see some things like aired out more. But it was interesting. Like I enjoyed the process of reading it. I just think looking back, it's not my favorite that I've read from Marnie Man so far. Okay, we're down to our last four here, people. Okay, so then I have Deadly Gossip by Brittany Nicole. So this one was Shine Nice Smut Club pick for this month. It's a romantic thriller. So this one follows Maddie and Duncan. And Maddie is like a Hollywood fixer. And she's kind of like a lawyer. I guess she is a lawyer, but she's also more like of a PR person kind of. And she gets assigned to work with Duncan Scott, I think his name is. And he's this very famous actor and he has a very famous wife and they're like America's couple but there has been some drama between them. His wife has found, has, uh, has been caught cheating with him and, or not cheating with him, cheating on him. And Maddie is brought in to kind of like help curb some of the PR. But immediately when Duncan sees Maddie, he's like into her and it ends up being their romance. So there is cheating in this and it definitely is a thriller element. Like you don't really know how some of the story is going to pan out, like who's telling the truth, you know, and it ends up being their romance. Here's my thing with this one that made it really hard for me to rate. And I ended up giving it three stars on Goodreads. I enjoyed the thriller aspect of this book I did not enjoy the romance Maddie and Duncan I couldn't have cared less if they got together by the 15% mark they were like obsessed with each other and they were like going out to dinners together and I'm like you're being seen out in public and like they didn't really care it's supposed to be forbidden because they're like client what what am I trying to say I don't know he's her client and like so they that's a no-no like they shouldn't be together and they didn't care but I did enjoy the thriller aspect more of like the twists and turns you get a lot of different POVs in this and you don't really know like whose motives are whose even at the end when it was all said and done there were certain things that I'm like this could have been like a little bit cooler and like some certain things that I feel like could have like added to the excitement at the end that weren't necessarily explored I don't know it was fine but I just like these two I like they deserve each other they're both like kind of flops so like yeah go be happy together for out of bounds we had a win we had a win for out of bounds book club that I co-host with Nikki and that was was I ever here by uh, Naomi Loud so this one here's the thing okay ah okay so I gave this one four and a half out of five stars and I did round it down to four and I'll get into why it didn't get rounded up to five but this is this author's debut and I was blown away by it so this one follows Sunny and this is not how you pronounce his name but it's how I pronounced it I pronounced it Byzantine it's definitely not it's like I think it's Byzantine it starts out he is in some like not like mafia business he's in some like unsavory businesses and he ends up on a job and he gets his throat slashed and he is bleeding out and he actually dies for a couple of minutes before doctors like start his heart again and bring him back to life but when he is dead and he sees years like hundreds of years prior of him and this one person he sees himself in this new body he sees this soulmate in this other body and he sees this whole entire like love story that they've had and how it ended in tragedy and so then when he comes back to life he's kind of like he realizes that he's had all of these past lives with this same soul but they've all ended badly and now he's trying to like in this new life 
find where this soul is again so that, that way they can like like make it work this time so that they, way they won't end in tragedy like they have over and over and over again in past lives he is on the hunt also at the same time for that he's also on the hunt for the dude that slashed his throat and he ends up five years later finding gary the guy who tried to kill him and while he finds and when he finds gary working at this bar he sees the bartender sunny and realizes that she is the soul that he's been looking for and the soul that he has been connected to for lifetimes over and over again and once he sees her he's not prepared to let her get away from him this time so it is a little bit stalkery um and obviously sunny is like traumatized from seeing these three dudes show up to a bar drag her boss away and then like kill him she's not so sold on Bazentine but it does end up being their romance and Sunny is a pretty sad individual definitely check your triggers for this book it's pretty dark um Sunny definitely has really struggled with her mental health a lot and is still struggling with that and you just see how Bazentine really wants to help her but also knows that she needs to help herself with it my thing with this book it was just beautiful the writing was beautiful the relationship progressed like progression was beautiful i loved both of the characters individually i loved them together the only reason it got rounded down to four stars for me is because when i looked back on it i was like what was the plot of the story there wasn't any plot to it besides the two of them falling in love which is fine i love character driven books but even when i think back to some of my favorite character driven books i can still pick like like events that happen through the book like nothing really happens in this book besides them getting together so i would have maybe just liked some more like side business with bazentine even like some activities that maybe sunny's doing just something more oh the other thing is i would have loved to seen more past lives of them like some more flashbacks to more of their past lives um to see like we do get like some of that but i would have i wanted like even more of that but it was just like really beautiful i was really blown away especially for this being their author the author's debut like i thought they did an amazing job then we're down to my last two okay so then i read rafe by rebecca weatherspoon so this one um i've actually been wanting to read for a while this and zenny have been on my tbr for a long time and then i was just recently on hoopla and so that the audiobooks got uploaded so i listened to the audio of rafe and this is a nanny romance again sloan is a doctor and she is recently divorced or like separated from the mother of her twin daughters or not the mother the father of her twin daughters and she has moved to a new state and away from the father and she now is looking for some help you know she's a doctor she's busy she's got things to do and she needs some help so she ends up hiring Rafe to be her nanny and they end up falling in love this is like that's pretty much it like they get into things pretty quickly I would have liked maybe a little bit more angst I would have liked for things to be drawn out a little bit I did end up giving this three and a half out of five stars I did round it down to three because there was just really no angst about them at all like I wanted them to fight their attraction a little bit more like a lot of these like nanny romances do but like literally I feel like on day two Rafe said to Sloan he was like I have never nannied for someone that I'm attracted to and she was like oh I'm attracted to you too and they like basically were like already kind of starting to like get into feels territory between them you want to come up and say hi say hi oh look at you big boy oh are you handsome boy okay you want to leave okay mom loves you the other thing that kind of took me out a little bit a little bit is that it is in third person i don't mind third person in fantasy books but in romances i do have a bit of a hard time with third person narration i just feel like it kind of disconnects me from the characters a little bit i did enjoy it though and i definitely do want to read zenny though actually i really liked zenny like the side characters i thought were a lot of fun in here and i am really excited to read her book especially with how it ended like i'm i'm very intrigued for that one but i did like it like it was good it's just not once again not like a new favorite of mine and lastly let's grab it one that i was not one that I didn't expect to love this much is Never Lie by Frida McFadden. So this one, so the one friend that I buddy read from the Embers with, this was then our next pick. And we flew through this book like really quickly. Normally we read like once a month, but obviously we finished that one and started and finished this one. So this one is a thriller. What is her name? Trisha and Ethan. Trisha and Ethan, Ethan, yes, are newlyweds and they are looking for a home and their whole entire relationship has been pretty quick. They met, got engaged and got married all within basically like the span of a year. And a lot of their, of her friends were kind of like, mm, you might want to 
like slow down a little bit, but you know, when it's right, it's right. And she felt it was right. And now they are looking to buy a home to hopefully like grow into and start their family. So they end up getting a showing for this one beautiful mansion out in the middle of nowhere. And of course, when they're on their way there, a blizzard hits and they end up getting snowed in at this property. When they get there, their realtor isn't there. So they're just kind of stuck in this mansion for basically like the weekend. And when they show up at this house, immediately Trisha gets like bad feelings about it. She's like, uh, something bad has happened here. I don't, I just, I don't like the vibes. But Ethan is like gung ho. The second he shows up, he's like, this house is beautiful. I love it. Can't you see us setting up our family here? And she's kind of like, yeah, no. And when they get inside, they see this portrait of this woman. They're like, oh my God, that's Dr. Adrian Hale, who was a very famous psychiatrist because she wrote a couple of best selling books. However, a few years back, she had disappeared and was suspected to have been murdered by her boyfriend. And yeah, they realized this is her house house but her house is like exactly like she left it. I'm gonna kind of leave it at that. This was so fun. We had a lot of fun reading this. Both of us didn't want to stop every time we like set a page length to stop by. This was a thriller too that's like I enjoyed my experience but also at the end when I found out the twist it didn't ruin it for me. Instead I was like oh my god I genuinely never saw that coming and it's not that I'm like such a thriller aficionado because like I don't read a lot, but it does take a lot to surprise me because I feel like I just sit there and I think of the most like outlandish things that I could possibly imagine that are going to happen and almost like spoil it for myself. But this one, I never saw that coming. I never saw that coming. Oh, and I guess the other big thing is that when Trisha's in this house, she ends up finding a bunch of tapes. So Dr. Adrian Hale, taped every single one of her sessions with her patients and she finds some of the tapes and she starts listening to them and she starts you know finding some certain things back in Dr. Adrian's history. It was just so much fun. I really love this book. I ended up giving it four stars. Okay, that is it for today's video. Uh, I don't know what's going to be up on Friday. I'm either going to have one of the book drafts videos. Like I said, those just take me a while to edit. So it's if I just have time this week and it is my nephew's birthday in a couple weeks and I am working on making him these cross stitch decorations for his new big boy room that he's getting. And it is literally taking me all of my extra time. So actually I don't know if that video will be up this uh one of the draft videos because any spare time I have I'm cross stitching so I don't know so it might actually be a bookshelf tour I just got two new bookcases you might see that like this looks different behind me because I was finally able to get all of my books into one space in my living room so I might do a bookshelf tour instead just for something like easy and quick but anyways you'll see a video on Friday nonetheless but yeah that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see ya